Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sagar Sahu and welcome to Vet Surgery Addicts. So today we will be discussing the canine fungal dermatitis. Before going to this class, you should know two things about the fungal dermatitis. First, it is almost a secondary disease. I already discussed regarding the canine parasitic diseases or parasitic dermatitis and also canine pyoderma. Okay, the canine parasitic dermatitis can be a primary disease. While the canine pyoderma, it can be primary, it can be secondary. But in case of fungal dermatitis, it is almost secondary. Okay, there may be some underlying cause which is causing this fungal disease. Usually, it uh, affects the animals which has a compromised immune system. Okay, so uh, when the uh, immune system is fried, then fungal uh, growth is exp uh, exponential and then it will cause the fungal disease. Okay, second thing is fungal diseases of the pets are mostly genotic. Some diseases are actually genotic. So while handling those cases, especially taking the swabs or impression smears, please do wear gloves. Okay, otherwise it may affect the individuals when his or her immune system is compromised. Okay, so let us go to our class. So, canine fungal dermatitis. You see, this series may be a canine fungal dermatitis. Most of the things are also applicable to feline, the cat also. Okay, slight variation is there. So, types of fungal diseases, there are many types. Most common are these four. Among these, if I, you will tell me, the top two will be the Malassezia. This is rank one. There are some research regarding the Malassezia. We will discuss the research papers also. Second will be dermatophytosis. Okay, these two are very very common fungal skin dermatitis in case of pet animals, especially the dogs. So, we will be discussing these two. Apart from that, there is candidiasis and the blastomycosis. Okay, there are some others also. These four are top four and among them we will study the top two, malassezis and the dermatophytosis. Okay, so this is the book which I am referring from which I am uh, preparing the lectures. This is a very good book, book and it also has very good pictorial presentation. I am in this class we will see some pictures. They are very less actually. I can't show you all the pictures but in this book you will find like 40 or 50 images regarding a single dermatitic lesions. Okay. So, you can correlate very well. If you want then you can download this book or you can purchase this book and this is a very good investment also for this book if you want to be a dermatologist. So, first disease we will be studying is malaxigiasis. Okay, this is the yeast infection. Okay, so basically this is the yeast infection. Almost always associated with an underlying cause. I told you, this is all fungal diseases are always or you can say almost they are secondary diseases. There are some diseases underlying. Okay, like atopy, food allergy, endocrinopathy, prolonged corticosteroids. You see all these atopy. Food allergy, endocrinopathy like hyperadenocorticism, prolonged corticosteroid use, they depress the immune system. When the immune system will be depressed, then fungus will grow. Okay, usually they are found on the skin, usually they are not harmful, but when your immune, the animal's immune system is fried or you can say gone, then they will proliferate some metabolic disorders. Predisposing breeds. Uh, just read these breeds, okay, they are like GSD, Dachshund, okay, they are predisposed to this fungal disease. If this breed animal are presented, you can suspect for some fungal diseases, okay. So, the clinical signs, moderate to severe pruritus. We will see the difference regarding the malassezis and dermatophytosis. Dermatophytosis, then pruritus is minimum, but here you will find the moderate to severe pruritus. You may find regional or general alopecia. We will see the pictures also. Initial stage, you will find excoriation, erythema, reddening of the skin, seborrhea, you can say oily deposition. Chronic, this is very, very, you can say characteristics. These lesions are very, very characteristic to malassezis. In chronic cases, usually fungal lesions are not detected in early stage. Okay, They are usually detected when some time has passed. So, the signs are lichenification, thickening of skin, hyperpigmentation, blackening of the skin due to deposition of melanin pigment, hyperkeratotic, you can say the uh, uh, stratum corineum will be thickened, okay, hyperkeratotic. The characteristic lesion is leathery or elephant like skin. This is very, very characteristic to malassezis. This one and this hyperpigmentation. 
will see the uh, pictures also they are very much characteristic to the malassegesis another thing is the characteristic is the ventral part of the body lesions are found mostly on the ventral part of the body interdigital space ventral neck axillary perineal region leg pores they are ventral part of the body okay unpleasant body odor you may also find paronychia <coughs> it means inflammation of the nail bed okay base of the nail paronychia with dark brown nail bed discharge we'll see all those in images then you can appreciate and there are some articles and in this book so book also when there will be malassegesis you may find concurrent external ear infection that is otitis external okay let us see some pictures then you can appreciate so this is a picture see this is very much characteristic this picture is very very characteristic to malassegesis see the lesions are only the ventral part of the body the ventral part of the body is affected lichenification thickening of the skin hyperpigmentation you can see blackening of the skin on the entire ventrum of this breed now this is very characteristic to malassegesis here see this is elephant skin like see the patterns this is elephant skin like elephant skin lesion this is also very very characteristic to malassegia dermatitis okay see these pictures okay keep in mind when you will see this type of lesion first should be go to the malassegesis first guess see here the interdigital dermatitis okay you see in case of pyoderma you will find the white crust or you can say pus color of pus but here you will find grizzly in fungal interdigital dermatitis you will find grizzly lesions okay see the interdigital dermatitis caused by secondary malaria usually fungal infection secondary grizzly alopecic inflamed skin in between the foot pads is typical of yeast poro dermatitis okay here you see this is very much characteristic to fungal infections you see the blackening of the nail beds see here the base of the nail is blackened due to deposition of some materials the brown discoloration around the base of the nail is a unique change typical of secondary malassegia infection i told you fungal infections are secondary infection almost so differential diagnosis dermatosis how to differentiate dermatosis can easily be identified by the skin scraping examination superficial pyoderma i told you the crust usually is pus colored or whitish colored crust dermatophytosis we will see there will be less itching and also dermatophytic nodules you will find okay so and here the there will be nail discoloration In dermatophytosis the nail bed will be inflamed we will see ectoparasites they can easily be identified allergy we will discuss about atopic dermatitis in some subsequent classes but in case of allergy usually allergy we don't have a very good diagnostic system allergy can be diagnosed by the ige antibody test okay but we don't have a very good diagnostic system usually if the animal is not responding to the antibacterial antiparasitic and antifungal medication then usually it is allergy okay next dermatophytosis this is the second disease uh, fungal dermatitis so fungal dermatophytosis is also known as ringworm infection the two species which are very common in ringworm infection is microsporum species and the trichophyton species okay and this particular disease very of very genetic importance so while handling special all the fungal diseases please try to wear gloves while taking the impression smears or cellophane tube impression smears or any swabs like that you wear gloves infection of the hair shaft and stratum corneum they basically cause this infection mostly affects young animals the kittens and puppy and also immunocompromised animals i told you fungal infection are mostly on the immunocompromised patient but dermatophytes usually affects the puppies puppies or kittens the clinical signs the lesion this is very characteristic you will find circular patches of alopecia but you may find irregular and diffuse alopecia also with variable scaling we will see the pictures also okay remember the signs and then when you will picture see the picture related other symptom you may find erythema papules cross they are usually the skin infection uh, skin infection signs you may find in all diseases okay but we will see some characteristics also seborrhea pan on par on each similar like all uh, the fungal dermatitis that is malassegesis but here there is some basic difference 
you may say that they are nearly similar but they are very much characteristic of the fungal diseases okay you may not identify as that is dermatophytosis or the malassezias but you may tell that this is fungal infection in case of dogs you will find dermatophytic nodules in cats you may not find but in case of dog you may find dermatophytic nodule which may confuse with papilloma we will see how you can differentiate see here this is a cat you can see here is a lesion you see this is a very normal skin lesion confused with anything ok so you have to diagnose by this smear examination impression smear examination which is the fastest way or you can see the fungal culture crusting alopecic dermatitis typical of dermatophytosis in the cat this is also a case of dermatophytosis severe crusting on the entire head of the uh, this breed is jack russell terrier and uh, the, this is uh, this was identified by the smear examinations okay so usually there are some lesions which may overlap see here the dermatophytosis nodule you see these species are usually found in soil so the animal which will be digging the soil you may find the lesions on the face see this is circular lesions okay this is very much characteristic to dermatophytosis okay here you see a nodule this is the inflamed nodule okay this is dermatophytic nodule okay so you see this may be confused with the papillomas skin tumors or you can say leak dermatitis okay we will see how we can differentiate when we will do the differential diagnosis here see the agent this is a very characteristic lesion see here circular patches here circular patches which has been morphed okay here are some patches here are some patches it may be circular or it may be irregular we discussed in clinical science this is very much characteristic to the dermatophytis dermatophytis generalized alopecia and erythema <coughs> see here in the malassezias you see the brown discoloration was the base of the nail here actually the entire the base of the nail or you can say the skin part will be inflamed alopecia and erythema of lateral digit typical of nail bed infection caused by the dermatophytis this is very much typical to dermatophytis this is and in case of malassezias this base of the nail will turn brown okay by finding this type of lesions you may suspect for fungal diseases and you can confirm the species by the skin skin smear examination okay here there are some more lesions this region okay this is con this was confirmed by not only the clinical science by but by the laboratory examinations this is a very characteristic lesion you see here there are two circular patches see these two circular patches overlapping this is known as kissing lesion symmetrical areas of alopecia erythema on the abdomen of the dog the symmetrical lesion a kissing lesion okay this kissing lesion is caused by contact of the skin on both sides of the ventral melon when the patient stands okay by this you can also tell this may be dermatophytes you see physical uh, diagnosis is basically a tentative diagnosis when it will be confirmed by the lab then it is confirmatory diagnosis okay so by this lesion you can tell the animal might have dermatophytosis or you can say fungal infection this is the organism when simply cellophane tube impression smear or impression smear may show the organisms and you may have to do some staining also microsporum canis this is 10x objective this is the lesion this is another species of microsporum microsporum gypsum in 40s 40x okay this is 40x so see the organisms but you see in veterinary practices all over india our diagnostic is really really poor Okay, there are some areas, some developed cities where we find very good diagnostic centers for the pets, uh, especially still the large animal lacking behind. But uh, see, if you want to be a very good diagnostician, diagnosis, I feel diagnosis is the key to everything. Okay, so if you want to be a very good diagnostician, you need good diagnostic laboratories. The in humans, they have gone so far, is this only because of diagnostics okay so when you can diagnose a disease then you can design a treatment protocol okay when you can't diagnose then may you may give the animals unnecessary medicines or unnecessary medications so i feel we should develop some things regarding the diagnosis so differential diagnosis demodicosis i already told like the malassezias simply skin scraping can differentiate demodicosis superficial pyoderma 
I told you the crossed formation and also you can do the gram staining also. Neoplasia, you see neoplasia, how to differentiate neoplasia? Usually, it is, if it is dermatophytic nodule, it will respond to antifungal medications, while the neoplasia will not. And some neoplasia are rapidly growing, so it will grow over a period of time, while the dermatophytic nodules will not grow in that faster rate. Okay. Sometimes it is limited to phase only and it may not grow, while the neoplasia will also definitely grow. Acran leak dermatitis, they are basically found on the extremities where dog can leak, while the dermatophytic nodules mostly found on the face. Okay, because the species is found in soil, so while digging, they contact the infections. Usually it is found in head region, but it may be found in entire body also. But you see, differential diagnosis is not exactly, uh, you can say there is a thin line. Okay, sometimes there is some gray area between two diseases. Okay, so you have to diagnose, diagnose them by laboratory. Simply do the skin impression smear examination or the fungal culture. Then you can say whether it is a dermatophytosis or acrylic dermatitis. Ultraviolet or wood lamp, this is for dermatophytosis. You can diagnose those diseases. Though it may give a false uh, positive result also, but it has some diagnostic value. Okay, yellow green fluorescence confirms the dermatophytosis. You can do the trichogram, hair in, uh, inspection, dermatohistopathology, this is very much, you can say, uh, diagnostic, dermatohistopathology. Fungal culture, this is the last thing, usually culture uh, comes after 48 hours or you can say take more time depending on the load on the laboratory. So before that, you have to do the treatment on the basis of physical examinations, physical symptoms. So now coming to the therapy. So the topical therapy, first topical, I always say when it is uh, when it is about the skin infection, first you should go for topical therapy. And there is also a very good article regarding the topical therapy versus the systemic therapy in case of antifungal disease, we will see also. So the focal lesion, uh, for focal lesion you can use topical creams, it may be turbinafin cream, clotrimazole, ketoconazole, biconazole. You see, there are preparation coming which contains multiple things, one antibiotic, one antifungal, but thing is most of the preparation like you see almizol or uh, ocazole, there is a ingredient which is a steroid, usually clobetazole, clobetazole. This is a steroid, okay. So when you have confirmed a fungal disease, giving steroids may flare up the lesion. Okay, so in that case, please prefer simply ketoconazole cream or turbinafin cream that are available in the market, simply antifungal cream. Don't use those creams which contain steroids. Okay. Next topical solution, the enlicolazole solution, lime sulfur solution, uh, they may not be available in market. I all tried those, but it is not that available, but it may be available in your area. So know the names. Okay. Generalized lesion, if it is entire over the body, shampoo, okay, bathing, every 2 to 3 days till total lesion resolve or you can say follow up skin cytology is negative. Consecutive to cytology examination, so to reveal there is negative for fungal infections. So the shampoos which contain 2% ketoconazole, 2% ketoconazole plus chlorhexidine, this is the best one in my opinion, also the book suggests this is the best, 2% ketoconazole and 2% chlorhexidine. 2% myconazole shampoos, 1% selenium sulfide, this is only for dogs, not, not to be used in cats. This is topical therapy. You have very limited antifungal agents, okay. Systemic therapy, ketoconazole at the dose range of 10 mg per kg body weight. You see all the fungal medication, it should be given with food, okay. It should be given with food and the treatment should be continued 3 weeks to 4 weeks minimum. The actual uh, rule is two consecutive, consecutive cytology should be negative. But if you are not having some psychological facility, go for minimum three to four weeks treatment with antifungal agent, whichever antifungal agent you are using. Fluconazole 10 mg per kg body weight, 24 hour interval, turbinafin 30 to 40 mg, it may come from as low as 5 mg, 5 to 40 mg. But if you are confirming with the fungal diseases, you may go for 30 to 40 mg per kg body weight, 24 hour interval, 
इटा को ना चल यू कैन गो फॉर 5 टू 10 एमजी पर केजी बॉडी वेट 24 आवर इंटरवल दिस आर सिस्टेमिक थेरेपी इफ एट ऑल नॉट रिक्वायर्ड डू नॉट यूज दिस सिस्टेमिक थेरेपी वी विल सी द आर्टिकल्स सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द फंगल डिजीजेस नाउ लेट अस सी सम रिसर्च पेपर्स यू सी देयर इजंट मच रिसर्च पेपर एक्चुअली ऑन फंगल डिजीजेस ओके देयर आर वेरी लिमिटेड रिसर्च पेपर आई हैव कलेक्टेड 3 एक्चुअली uh which i think i should share with you so this is a case report actually uh, but you can say uh, it is not exactly the research paper but it solves the purpose so 2002 in ohio this is a very old research paper but actually i found something new i didn't know actually it is pulse therapy pulse therapy of antifungal agent pulse therapy so what is pulse therapy this was done for itraconazole itraconazole pulse therapy i told you in systemic therapy you can give itraconazole 5 to 10 mg per kg body weight in 24 hour interval what they did they divided into two groups in first group they gave itraconazole daily while daily for 3 week and the second group they gave two days in a week they fixed two days like monday and tuesday every week for three week okay so they found that both are equally affecting er eradicating the malassezia pachydermatitis okay so what is the advantage of this you are not giving too much of antifungal agent too much of antifungal agent may cause liver toxicity they cause problem with liver usually when giving the antifungal medication you should give some liver supplements okay to protect the liver so in this article you see only the pulse therapy can be equally effective as the daily doses okay so you can try with pulse therapy while dealing with the malassezia pachydermatitis next this is in 2019 in italy this is actually a case report but there is also a very good in 2020 in some uh, area there is a uh, very good article regarding the fungal resistance okay azole resistance of this malassezia pachydermatitis so what will happen if you see there is very few fungal agents usually the azoles ketoconazole then uh, etaconazole posaconazole voraconazole whatever is there there are azole group of anti antifungal agents we have very limited and there is also amphotericin b but amphotericin b is very very toxic okay so you have to be very careful just like the antibiotics in antibiotics we have very different class of uh, antibiotics okay but fungal they are very very limited you have to be very careful and one more thing fungal infection is more difficult to manage than the bacterial infections okay you may die if this treatment failure occurs okay so it was a uh, case report azole resistance in malassezia pachydermatitis causing treatment failure in a dog okay the fungal infection is very very scary than actually bacterial infections but usually they do not have much resistance like antibiotic resistance that is why we are safe otherwise animals might suffer so be uh, what is it be ethical when giving the antifungal agents so this was a research in 2022 in india our country proud country so canyon malaise is an overview actually this article covers many aspects many many aspects but i am telling about the therapeutic aspects what is the basically therapeutic aspect in this article therapeutic so what they told you should always go for topical therapy first topical topical over systemic okay simply bathing or you can say dipping with antifungal solution can be enough for controlling the fungal dermatitis or malassezias or dermatophytosis or anything candidiasis blastomycosis like that so you should always prefer the topical over system which is systemic i told you they have very bad effect on the liver they can cause liver toxicity so it is very safe you should use the topical agents first and if you are using systemic unnecessarily it may cause the resistance okay when there will be resistance then it is gone there is very few uh, fungal agents antifungal agents what you will do you can't do anything okay so this article focuses you should go for the topical 
antifungal agents. So these three are the vesicular articles which I found. I should share with you so that you can know. Okay. And uh, by this we are finishing the canine fungal dermatitis. In the next class in this playlist we will be doing the atopic dermatitis. Okay. So till then Tata bye bye. Take care.